Distinguished guests and colleagues, good afternoon. I'm Wu Shengkuo from Beijing Normal University. Our line, online moderator, Mr. Li Yuxiao, Secretary General of the Cyber Security Association of China, is online. Welcome to Open Forum, hosted by the Bureau of International Cooperation of Cyberspace Administration of China and the Chinese Academy of Cyberspace Studies. The theme of this forum is jointly share the responsibilities in the digital era and promote digital governance and cooperation. Taking this as a starting point, we have invited representatives from government, international organization, enterprise, industry organization, and the think tank worldwide to hold dialogues on the two topics. First, the impact of internet innovations on digital governance. Second, the approach of digital governance capacity building and international cooperation. In order to jointly explore the ways to promote the global digital governance cooperation and uh, comprehensively strengthen the digital governance capacity building. More important, we would like to continue to build a sound digital governance ecosystem. Now, let's start the forum. First, let us welcome Ms. Qi Xiaoxia, Director General of Bureau of International Cooperation of Cyberspace Administration of China, organizer of this forum to deliver an opening speech. Thank you, Ms. Qi. Uh, Minister Ren, distinguished guests, dear friends, good afternoon. I'm very pleased to meet all of you in Kyoto on behalf of the Bureau of International Cooperation, Cyberspace Administration of China, I wish to extend a warm welcome and heartfelt appreciation to all guests, both present and online. Today, the phenomenon development of information technology revolution and the digital economy is transforming the way of production and life, exerting far-reaching influence over social and economic development of states, global governance system, and human civilization. The rapid application and the development of emerging technologies represented by artificial intelligence also poses a new problem of governance to all countries. Problems with the internet such as unbalanced development, unsound regulation, unreasonable order still exist across the globe and enhancing digital governance has increasingly become a matter of interest to all countries, as well as an important topic for discussion. Against this backdrop, it is necessary and relevant for us to have an in-depth discussion on this important topic. Since China gained full-featured access to the internet, it has always been committed to promoting internet development and governance. Historic progress in relevant undertakings has been made in China. Hundreds of millions of Chinese people have a greater sense of gain from sharing the achievements of internet development. Last year, China released the white paper entitled Jointly Build a Community with a Shared Future in Cyberspace. This paper introduces China's vision of internet development and governance shares its achievements in promoting the building of a community with a shared future in cyberspace, outlines the prospects for international cooperation, and expresses China's sincere desire to strengthen internet development and governance cooperation in cyberspace. We are ready to work with all parties to keep pace with the trends of the times seize the historic opportunities of information revolution and tackle the risks and challenges in cyberspace, making the internet deliver more benefits to mankind. With this in mind, I wish to propose efforts in three areas. First, we need to follow a people-centered approach with a focus on inclusiveness and shared benefits. Focusing on people is the purpose of digital governance we need to put people first, 
making positive efforts to apply internet to education, health care, and poverty alleviation, improve digitally enabled service, and enhance digital literacy and the skills of different groups. We are willing to work with the international community to increase support and assistance to vulnerable groups, promote science and technology for good, bridge the digital divide, and facilitate the effective implementation of the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Second, we need to promote security and stability and maintain good order. Security and stability is the cornerstone for digital governance. We uphold the philosophy of open and cooperative cybersecurity, uphold respect for cyber sovereignty, and respect for the rights of all countries to choose their own path of network development and governance model, as well as to equally participate in international governance in cyberspace. We are ready to deepen exchange and cooperation with other countries in cyberspace cooperating to combat cyber terrorism and crimes, and jointly safeguarding peace, security, and stability in cyberspace. Third, we need to stay united and work together for shared governance. Unity and cooperation is the effective way for digital governance. Practices have proved that anyone attempting to form exclusive blocks will only impede digital governance. To improve digital governance, we must uphold multilateral participation and multi-party participation so as to foster an enabling environment for digital economic development. We should leverage the role of the United Nations as the main channel in international cyberspace governance and give play to the role of government, international organizations, internet companies, technical communities, social organizations, and individual citizens to jointly study and formulate norms for cyberspace governance that reflect the interests and concerns of all parties in a more balanced way, making the governance system more just and equitable. Ladies and gentlemen, IGF is the important platform under the United Nations we are willing to join hands with all parties on the basis of mutual respect and trust to solve diff difficult issues, strengthen areas of weakness, and improve rules of governance concerning digital governance, constantly developing governance landscape featuring multilateral participation and multi-party participation, and jointly build a community with a shared future in cyberspace. Thank you for your attention, and I wish the forum a full success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Qi, for the relevant approach of China. Next, we have Mr. Xuan Xinjiang, Vice President of Chinese Academy of Cyberspace Studies, to deliver the speech. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, hello, everyone. On behalf of the Chinese Academy of Cyberspace Studies, I would like to extend warm congratulations on the holding of the Open Forum of Internet Governance Forum and a sincere welcome to all the guests. At present, the innovation of the Internet, Big Data, Cloud Computing, AI, and other digital technologies are accelerating. The intelligent industry and the digital economy are booming. All these have greatly changed the global allocation of the factors and resources, industrial development models, and people's lifestyles. At the same time, the digital divide is becoming more and more pronounced. Cybersecurity and data security risks are increasingly penetrating, and the global digital government governors is still facing problems such as unbalanced foundation, imperfect system, and fragmented rules. In this context, it is of great significant, significance for us to explore ways to strengthen digital governance 
and international cooperation. It is a shared aspiration of all countries to build and maintain a peaceful, secure, open, cooperative, and orderly cyberspace. Building a community with a shared future in cyberspace has increasingly become the broader consensus of the international community. Now, from the perspective of our think tank, I would like to share with you some observations and reflections on how to promote capacity building and international cooperation on digital governance. First of all, seize the opportunity in the digital era to un unleash the potential of digital productivity. Nowadays, the trend digitalization has brought historical development opportunities, but it is also accompanied by risks and challenges. Digital technology governors, data governors, and digital platform governors have become important topics. Think Tank should actively carry out research to explore how to adapt to the development trend in the digital area. Reserve space for technical innovation and development on the premise of ensure security, optimize the digital development environment, so as to further tap the potential of the digital technology in facilitating to achieve the sustainable development goals and enable people around the world to share the fruits of digital development. Second, enhance mutual trust through dialogues and exchanges to prevent digital security risks. At present, global security threats are becoming increasingly permanent. The rapid development of new technologies and, and, and applications have brought new risks. The importance and urgency of building a solid bottom line and regulating development have become more permanent in the face of these new issues and challenges. Think tanks should play a bridging role in strengthening dialogues, exchange, research, and discussion, so as to enhance strategic mutual trust in cyberspace. Think tanks should in, you know, innovate to build platforms for cross-disciplinary, cross-field, and cross-national exchange and cooperation, and actively offer advice and suggestions for preventing digital security risks and improving the system of digital governance rules. Third, guide mutual multiple parties to actively particip participate in building a sound digital governance ecosystem. A sound digital governance ecosystem is the basic guarantee for promoting the digital innovation and development. Facing the rapid iteration of digital technologies and the complex issues in digital governance, we need to adhere to mutual, natural and mutual party participation. The parties in digital governance include the government, international organization, enterprise, social organization, etc. All parties should play their respective role Cooperate, cooperate with each other and stressing exchanges. Think tanks should be open-minded with a strong sense of responsibility and should, through dialogue, communication, general research, and other means, build consensus, resolve misunderstanding and differences, and jointly contribute to the building of the global digital governance ecosystem. Last but not least, promote cooperation on digital governance to improve the global digital governance system. Promoting openness and cooperation is an important principle for building a community with a shared future in cyberspace. Think tanks should promote win-win cooperation and contribute wisdom to the development of the digital technology and the formulation of the governance rules. We are much winning to cooperate with research institutions, universities, think tanks, enterprises, 
and international organizations from all countries in the field of the internet. Jonathan study digital development and governance issue, and Jonathan contributes to the development of the internet. Chinese President Xi Jinping called on the international community faced with the opportunities and the challenges brought by digitalization to jointly build a cyberspace that is fairer and more equitable, more open and inclusive, safer and more stable, and more vibrant. Let us work together to find solutions to the challenge of the digital governance, promote the building of the closing cruiser community with a shared future in cyberspace, and jointly create a better future for mankind. Finally, I wish this forum is a, a complete success. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for your wonderful speech. Next, let's have the second session of special guest speech. Welcome, Mr. Ren Xianliang, the Secretary General of World Internet Conference and the President of China Federation of Internet Societies to express his insights, please. 女士们、先生们、朋友们，当前世界百年未有之大变局，加速演进，数字化、网络化、智能化、加速发展，人类的生产、生活方式和社会治理方式正在发生着深刻的变化。Ladies and gentlemen, friends, the world today is undergoing major changes on the scene in the century. The pace of digitization, networking, and intelligence is accelerating. The way we produce, live, and govern is also undergoing profound changes. Driven by digital technology, the digital transformation of traditional industries is accelerating. The cross-border data flows are growing exponentially, and the digital platforms are accelerating their global expansion. 在数字技术的推动下，传统产业数字化的转型不断加速，数据跨境的流动大幅增加。与此同，数字平台加快全球布局，数字治理的重要性日益增强。与此同时，单边主义、保护主义持续抬头，全球数字治理池子。不断加剧，各国数字治理的能力发展不平衡日益显著，数字治理的模式的竞争一发突现。Digital governance has become an increasingly important global issue. At the same time, unilateralism and protectionism are on the rise. The, glo the global digital governance deficit is widening. The uneven development of digital governance capabilities among countries is becoming more evident. The 积极探索构建政府、企业、学界、行业组织等多方参与的良好数字治理生态。With the goal of jointly building community with a shared future in cyberspace, the WIC will adhere to the concept of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits, and actively explore ways to create a digital governance ecosystem with the participation of government departments, enterprises, academia, and industry organizations. 为推动构建数字治理的责任与利益共同体，让数字技术更好地造福人类，我愿提出三点建议。In order to build a community of shared responsibilities and common interests in a field of digital governance and make digital technology deliver more greater benefits to mankind, I'd like to propose the following. 数字治理应更加精准高效。数字技术为解决各类智力难题提供了新思路、新方法、新手段。First, digital governance should be more precise and efficient. Digital technology provides new ideas, methods, and means to solve governance problems. 
数字技术的正面效应，同时用技术治理好技术，不断提升基于数字化手段进行高效治理的能力。We should leverage the positive side of the digital technology while using technology to govern technology and constantly improve the ability of efficient governance based on digital means. 世界互联网大会多年来围绕前沿技术举办分论坛，开展领先科技成果发布、实践案例展示、博览会、比赛等活动。就是要为促进互联网领域前沿的科技在国家治理方面的转化应用提供良好的平台。Over the years, the WIC has organized various events around cutting-edge technologies, including forums, release of leading scientific and technological achievements, presentation of practice cases, exhibitions, and competitions to provide enabling platform to promote the commercialization and application of cutting-edge internet technologies in national governance. 数字治理应更加包容普惠。全球仍有三十亿人没有接入互联网，妇女、老人和农村人口在其中占比较大。Second, digital governance should be more inclusive. There are still three billion people in the world who are unconnected, a large proportion of whom are women, elderly, and rural population. 数字治理应避免进一步扩大数字鸿沟。不能让弱势群体进一步被边缘化。Digital governance should avoid further widening the digital divide and prevent vulnerable groups from being further marginalized. 世界互联网大会愿意各方携手努力，共同实现联合国，确保到二零三零年，人人拥有安全、负担得起的互联网接入的目标。The WIC stands ready to make concerted efforts with all parties to achieve UN targets for the universal connectivity. Every person should have safe and affordable access to the Internet by 2030. 数字治理应坚持合作共赢 Third, digital governance should adhere to women cooperation. 团结就是力量，分裂没有出路。面对各种风险挑战。我们应该同舟共济，共担数字时代的责任。Unity is strength, division is weakness. In the face of risks and challenges, we should stay in the same boat and share responsibilities in the digital age. 因与对话协商，解决跨境数据流动、平台治理、人工智能、网络安全等问题。We should. Engage in dialogues and exchanges to address issues such as cross-border data flows, platform governance, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity. World Internet Forum will strengthen the bridges and the WIC will do our best to build bridges to promote closer and pragmatic global cooperation on digital governance. 女士们、先生们，世界互联网大会每年在中国的浙江举办乌镇峰会。Ladies and gentlemen, every year the WIC will host the Wuzhen Summit in Zhejiang, China. 今年是峰会的第十年，将于十一月八日至十日举行。This year marks the tenth year of the Wuzhen Summit, which will take place from November eighth to tenth. 借此机会。我愿意邀请在座的各位，共聚美丽的中国江南水乡，加强对话交流，深化务实合作，共创美好的数字未来。I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you all to attend the Wuzhen Summit in the beautiful water town of Wuzhen to strengthen dialogues and exchanges, deepen pragmatic cooperation, and build a better digital future together. Thank you. 谢谢大家。Thank you very much, Mr. Ren, for the important words. Now let's start the third session of keynote speech. We have consulted different experts and scholars and various institutions in advance 
to determine these two topics, please remind you that uh, each speaker can have six minutes. Let's move on to the first topic, the impacts of internet innovation on digital governance. First of all, let me introduce the father of internet in Japan, Professor Juni Murai of KO University. Please. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, uh, it's an honor uh, to be here uh, to discuss with you about the uh, subject. And uh, uh, also, I'd like to welcome um, to uh, Kyoto, Japan, uh, on behalf of the Japanese side of the host. And uh, also, uh, you know, I'd like to uh, mention that uh, I'm a frequent uh, Uchen Summit participants and that then as I've been missing uh, the to visit there uh, during the COVID-19, but uh, uh, unfortunately I have a conflict schedule. So um, in that sense, then it's uh, very nice to be here to talk with you. Um, the subject uh, about, about this one, about the, uh, the, uh, the, impact on the internet innovation in the digital governance. Then the, I'd like to mention the three points uh, from my experience of the long-term uh, participants of the development of the internet. And the first one is uh, Ms. Chi was uh, mentioned uh, about the you know kind of uh, uh, user, human being based uh, governance type of uh, thinking. Uh, remember the, when we started uh, developing the internet, then it's always started from the supply side of the internet services, right? So, uh, you know, that's been uh, uh, very successfully done for the first uh, two decades or something of the internet. But uh, now internet is uh, uh, outreaching to most of the people and the most of the region and the most of the industries. Therefore, it's always uh, important to view from the user side and uh, then you know, find out the issues and the sharing the issue with uh, uh, the you know the uh, governance leaders and uh, then the users and the industries and the commercial uh, entities. So uh, that's a big change after the uh, two or three decades of a development of the internet. So the uh, user uh, point of view. That's uh, the first uh, point I I like to mention. The second uh, point I'd like to mention is uh, architectural advancement uh, the, uh, about the technology. So uh, uh, the internet started, of course, with a you know, kind of IP uh, and the digital uh, packet switching network, but uh, then you know, introducing the web and uh, then in the cloud and the social network and the IoT with the sensor information to be exchanged over the internet, and then the AI with uh, a lot of data are generated from, uh, mainly from a social network, but also from the sensors and the digital uh, image data, and et cetera. So those advancements, rapid advancement actually, of the technology is uh, uh, creating the very much a complex uh, requirement to the government governance of the internet as well. And the, the one of the issue uh, I see these days is that the policy leaders to understand the, those technological architecture getting harder and harder. So um, that's a very natural thing, right? Because the uh, uh, technology architecture uh, getting very much a complex and uh, uh, advanced uh, way. So the, what's gonna be the solution then? Uh, it's uh, really the, um, the all the stakeholders working together and they're listening to each other, and that there should be the place to discuss about the you know what is a new technology, what is the impact, and the, from the different uh, standpoint uh, to discuss. That's uh, probably the one of the way that to be described uh, the multi-stakeholder approach as well, and uh, then you know global. Uh, discussion is going to be also very important because uh, the technology is going to be uh, you know, uh, different in a, uh, uh, various part of the world. And uh, so uh, I see the, uh, the uh, 
photonic network type of a thing. Quantum uh, computation is going to be uh, one. And uh, also the non-terrestrial, the space uh, infrastructure uh, type of a discussion uh, really happening uh, in this year. And uh, so uh, those are the uh, new area uh, to discuss globally about the uh, future of the internet governance as well. And uh, so uh, the third one, third point is about the cybersecurity thing. So the advancement of those uh, uh, leading technologies and the changing the technology, but the good technology uh, can be used in a proper way or by use. But uh, there's always abusers of the new convenience technology, right? Yeah, that's very natural in a sense. And uh, so the cybersecurity approach is uh, jointly uh, working toward the abuse of the new technology as well. So uh, uh, it's also a very important point that the abuse, I mean, I mean working together to against the abusers, right? That's a cybersecurity, very natural. But also the uh, working together for the proper use and the ethical use of the technology together. It's going to be very important way about thinking about the governance uh, of the, for the innovation and the future uh, together. So uh, uh, those are the three points I wanted to mention uh, regarding these topics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Murai, for your wonderful sharing. Now, I give the floor to Veni Valkowski, Vice President for UN Engagement from ICANN, please. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, thanks to the organizers for uh, putting this session together. Um, we are hearing a lot about, you know, what's happening around the world in the field of um, internet innovations and digital governance, and um, of course, uh, one of the fundamental principles of the internet since its inception was the the the, uh, the way it was developed and the way the decisions have been uh, taken to shape the internet trajectory have resulted from a multi-stakeholder approach of collaborative and bottom-up consensus-based uh, decision making as opposed to uh, other types of governance. Uh, we are at the Internet Governance Forum which was created after the World Summit on the Information Society in 2005. And those of us who have been there, I'm one of them, we remember that in the beginning of uh, this whole process, uh, people were thinking that uh, the multi-stakeholder model of internet governance is only about ICANN. Uh, 20 years later, we see that almost no one is talking anymore about ICANN because there are so many different applications and uh, services that are on the internet that people, are, people don't even know that we exist. And I say that's a good thing because that means we are doing a good job. Because if the internet is not working uh, and it's ICANN's fault, everybody will know about us. Uh, but uh, the reality is that um, all these innovations became possible because of exactly of the open architecture, open standards, open way of developing the internet. Um, we have seen, I can give an example with one of the services that have been kind of developed in the test bed for the last 20 years, ENUM, e -N -U -M. It Nobody has heard about it, by the way, which is not a surprise because it's been tested for the last 20 years. Uh, and nothing happened. But everything else that relates to domain names, IP addresses, protocol parameters that actually is functioning and is being used widely has proven to be working. So this model that was built in the beginning turned out, has turned out to be actually a successful one even though uh, people like Vin Cerf who uh, is at the IGF and has been speaking and is, will continue to speak in the next couple of days uh, never imagined that the internet will become what it is. Uh, and that's why some of the architecture may not be necessarily reflecting the uh, growth of the internet. However, companies, innovators, people around the world have shown that there is always a way to create something that will um, use the infrastructure, that will use the TCP IP and will make possible new services. 
I mean, I come originally from Bulgaria, so I can share the fact that um, it used to be a very poor country following the um, communism. And um, our internet users didn't have money to pay for high speed at high prices, unlike the people in the Western countries. So we created different ways of providing the internet services, which were low price, high speed, and uh, this was going against everything that you have read in the manuals of how to provide internet services. But going back to, to the issue and uh, the, the topic, you know, which is the impact of internet innovation on digital governance, there is also one other important point, which is there is a trend where digital governance is used interchangeably with internet governance and including at the UN, where I spent most of my time uh, talking to diplomats and UN uh, officials, mm, there, is a, there is a lack of understanding that these are two different issues. So internet governance and digital governance are not the same. Although sometimes you may see them confused by member states or people who are not familiar with that. And I think it's important to know that there is a difference between those two because uh, that will reflect in the possible approaches of issues dealing with um, innovation. So digital governance is usually, this refers to approaches uh, necessary to mitigate the use and risk of technologies, applications, services, uh, things like uh, artificial intelligence. And these are usually technologies that are distinct, typically distinct from the internet. So because of the focus, uh, of because of its focus on specific issues affecting everyday online users' habits, uh, for example, broader than the internet or its technical layer alone, digital governance is comparable to public health challenges. So we are trying to make a difference between those and we are raising awareness at uh, the UN level and other places where we speak because we believe that it's important for the users and the policy makers and the technical community and also you know, civil society, businesses, etc. all the stakeholders who are engaged in the uh, IGF and in the development of the internet to know that actually there is a big difference between internet governance and digital governance and we shouldn't confuse them. The internet governance has shown that the multi-stakeholder approach is working uh, whenever there is an issue that needs to be addressed, uh, it has been addressed with, uh, I mean, sometimes it takes more time than people would really want to, but there hasn't been a problem that has been um, developed on the internet that was not solved using the multi-stakeholder approach. And therefore, we are big proponents not only of the Internet Governance Forum, obviously ICANN is very supportive, uh, we do participate wherever we are invited, which goes into our mission, because we can't really go and discuss issues that are not related to the techni technical underpinnings of the Internet. But when, th when there are issues touching on those, um, uh, on ICANN's mission, we are happy to participate and to provide technical, neutral information about how the Internet functions and what we do. And we have found times and again, through the last, um, I would say, 10 or so years uh, after the WISIS plus 10 review, which was in 2015 at the United Nations, that the more we talk to uh, every stakeholder, the better it becomes because there is more knowledge that we share and more facts. And then people take uh, decisions based on those facts, not based on their opinions about how the internet is functioning or should be functioning. So I would finish with that, that um, we, I'm happy that we have also among us, and he will speak in a little bit, uh, Wolfgang Kleinwachter, who is one of the pioneers of the internet governance uh, model. And um, if I'm not mistaken, you are also a member of the WIGIC, Wolfgang. Yes, uh, the World King Group on Internet Governance, which actually defined what internet governance is. So maybe uh, at some point there will be a need for another working group to define what digital governance is so that there is no confusion between those two. Thank you. Thanks to Mr. Markowski for the interesting insights. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Shi Peixi, Professor and uh, Director from Global Internet Studies Center in Communication University of China to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, my topic is uh, global digital governance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
move into the direction of uh, global commons or to the direction of uh, digital fragmentation. So there is a question mark here. So it is uh, somehow beyond the internet governance, uh, but it's uh, similar somehow to cyber, cyber security governance. So I treated cyber security governance and uh, digital governance in a rather similar way. Uh, my idea, idea is that after being blessed by uh, the internet and the associated innovations for decades, uh, two basic directions of uh, global digital governance can be observed, identified. Uh, I treated it in a very simplified way. So the, the first direction is rather, uh, I treated rather positively. Uh, it's uh, rather bright and uh, it can be called a direction or approach uh, towards uh, global commons. And uh, uh, the other direction is a rather negative one. Uh, it is a direction uh, towards uh, digital fragmentation or a kind of division of the global digital uh, ecosystems. Uh, and this is a rather simplified way of making di distinctions. And I introduced the first direction, uh, the direction towards digital commons. So in spite of the fact, as I observe, that the international community uh, is very difficult for the international community to uh, replicate or repeat the successes in climate change and uh, to repeat the success in nuclear weapons and the success in the governance also of the sea. Uh, in spite of the failure, for example, to reach a binding treaty in cyber governance and digital governance uh, due to different reasons uh, that the digi digital issues can be so complicated, it can be so comprehensive, it can be so multidimensional and it can be so interwoven. Uh, in spite of the failures to have such a treaty uh, or in Wolfgang's words, uh, to have a Kyoto protocol perhaps mm -hmm. in the <laughs> cyber area if we consider where this uh, conversation happens. So in spite of this, uh, there have been many positive efforts, initiatives uh, that uh, are rather prominent. Uh, they are from states, they are from uh, enterprises, they are also from uh, the internet pioneers. Uh, for example, if we move beyond the ICA model, ICA model I think uh, represented by the multi-stakeholder approach can be said to be uh, something towards global commons, uh, which is uh, very uh, successful and intriguing. In addition to that, in 2014, uh, Brazil, where Luca is from, has this uh, uh, Net Mundial initiative. Uh, and also 2017, Microsoft has this uh, uh, Digital Geneva Convention, though Microsoft now didn't talk about this much after it was proposed in 2017. But it is a very brave uh, uh, attempt or effort. And 2018, uh, I think the French President Macron proposed uh, uh, the Paris Call for Trust and uh, Security. And 2019, the Global Convention on Stability of Cyberspace put forward these eight norms. Mm -hmm. And uh, same year, uh, internet pioneer Tim Lee launched a contract for the web. And 2020, China put forward a global initiative on data security. And I'll go now at the United Nations in these discussions around the global digital contract, a uh, compact, I mean. Uh, so these initiatives and efforts are designed both for the like-minded countries or stakeholders and the not like-minded uh, stakeholders. So it is rather inclusive. It is meant for inclusion, not for exclusion. Uh, so it is intended for finding solutions. In this sense, I think this, these are the initiatives that are moving towards a direction that of a global commons. However, uh, there are some other uh, uh, negative uh, trends that can be described as a direction towards digital fragmentation and a division. Uh, and some leading states are putting, are intervening very heavily with the digital domain and are creating tensions and divisions in terms of, uh, for example, telecommunications uh, service providers in terms of applications, in terms of application stores, in terms of undersea cable constructions, 
and in terms of uh, cloud services, and mobile phone operation systems, and also in terms of 5G, the supply chain of chips, and in terms of uh, where tech companies can be listed on the market, and uh, most recently, in terms of the capital flow about new technologies. So th uh, these are the rather negative trends as I have uh, observed. Therefore, I believe it's now is a very critical moment uh, to find measures to avoid such a digital fragmentation and to avoid the digital divisions by having uh, new innovative approaches of global digital governance. I think uh, our uh, uh, Secretary General of WIC, uh, Mr. Zhen, uh, talked about these uh, new measures uh, in this aspect. Uh, I stop here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Xu, for your relevant remarks. Let's move on to the second topic, the approach of digital governance capacity building and international cooperation. First of all, let us welcome Professor Wolfgang Kranwachter, professor from the University of Aarhus, for the speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, indeed, uh, 25 years ago, the internet was seen as a technical problem with some uh, political implications. But today, the internet is a political problem with a technical component. This is a big difference. 25 years ago, when the World Summit started its deliberations, so I had the honor to work with Madame Hu, the president of the Internet of Society of China, in the working group on internet governance, as Veni has said. And our task was to define what internet governance is, because it, a lot of people had different ideas what it is. And uh, when we had the first meeting with Kofi Annan, who was the Secretary General of the United Nations um, in 2003, so he said, he argued that the internet is a technology innovation, a technical innovation. But uh, what we need now are policy innovations. So that means you cannot handle, treat, govern the internet as any other thing. So that's a technical innovation and we have to innovate policy making. And all the debates in the uh, working group on internet governance, which led to the Tunis agenda in 2005, uh, were driven by how we can innovate policy making. And the result is the multi-stakeholder approach. Because the argument was the internet is too big, it cannot be managed by one group alone. That's not a question of leadership, who leads it? But the internet needs collaboration from all sides. So, and uh, I think this is really, uh, th was the starting point for what we uh, see now um, penetrates a lot of areas which are related to the internet. So uh, there is no definition exactly what the multi-stakeholder approach is. So different people have different ideas, but the basic concept behind this is you have to involve the affected and concerned people in policy development. So the three elements of the definition was, number one, multi-stakeholder, number two, it has to be based on shared principles, norms, uh, and um, uh, decision-making procedures. What uh, Madame Xi has said, you know, shared responsibility. So the concept of sharing was the second key element. And the third element is also important because we differentiated between the evolution of the internet and the use of the internet. So uh, when uh, Vinny talked about the internet governance and digital governance. So I would disagree because this is really, uh, uh, you know, fighting with words or playing with words. So the, uh, the understanding of the um, two terms, evolution and, and, and use of the internet, reflects that the internet is a layered system. So, and of different layers, you can have different governance models. So on the technical layer, on the ground layer, we have 
this one world, one internet concept. So we are using all the same protocols, you know, the DNS, the uh, TCP IP protocol, the IP address system, uh, BGP, HTTPS, and this enables that everybody can communicate with everybody. So this is was, uh, what Jan said, you know, the people-centered approach so that everybody can enjoy this right to communicate. So on the application layer, so that's different. So this is the use of the internet. And here we have the reality that we have one world, but 193 different national jurisdictions. So, and this, the two layers are interlinked, but uh, you know, the, the visionaries of the internet in the 90s had probably the idea that the one world, one internet will go also to the application layer. So, but uh, this is certainly unrealistic because we have 193 sovereign states which they have their own national policy. Uh, the risk what I see now is that probably some governments say we could uh, bring the 193 jurisdiction also to the ground layer, to the, uh, to, to, and this would be the internet fragmentation. Because so far the internet is not fragmented. The internet works thanks to ICANN, and when, when he said it's good that nobody may uh, any more questions ICANN, so because they are doing the job, you know, whether it was a pandemic or a war or other crisis, so people could send emails, they could go to websites, and this is like, the air we, d we need in our environment, internet is like air. There is no Chinese air, there is no American air, there is no Russian air or German air, so we have polluted air or clean air. So, and what we have to do in the community is to keep the internet air clean. So, and uh, to, 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 to keep out, uh, to uh, avoid um, a, a pollution. And in so far, I think the Global Digital Compact which is now, as um, uh, Patrick has uh, outlined, you know, the, uh, the, the most uh, relevant political initiative on the table would be a good opportunity to bring uh, the different groups together and to find a global consensus for the next 10 years. So there will never be a solution forever. So uh, Bill Clinton, the former president of the United States, has once argued internet governance is like stumbling forward. So, I thought <laughs> so we are moving you know, from one step to the next step to the next step. But as long as it's forward, and as long everybody is included, and it's based on what you have said, your people-centered, human rights-centered, and uh, you know, based on a secure internet, and which is uh, open for all, inclusive, then we are in the right direction. And um, so we have differences in the world. We live in a multipolar world. We, we know that others are different, but we have to learn to accept this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Klein Wachter, for this wonderful sharing. Now, let's welcome the speech of Mr. Luca Belli, Director of Cyber Bricks from Brazil, please. Thank you very much. And I would first start, would like to start thanking the organizers for having put together this excellent session. Very interesting uh, speeches so far. I would like to contribute a little bit uh, with some ideas that we have developed over the past years within the Cyber Bricks project, which is a specific research project we have at the Center for Technology and Society uh, at FGB Law School that uh, I direct. And uh, the ideas that we have been developed over the past five years of mapping are precisely trying to understand to what extent this grouping that in over the past weeks has gained uh, again a lot of prominence due to the expansion, uh, to what extent this grouping has been discussing, sharing uh, good practices and information about digital policies and internet governance over the past years. So I'm bringing some of the elements here of the uh, research that we have been uh, conducting. First of all, for, for those who do not know, FGV is a very relevant academic institution in Brazil. It's currently the third most relevant think tank uh, in the world out of more than 11,000. Uh, the CyberBricks uh, project and all the information we're going to share are all available uh, in open access, including the recording of many 
interesting lectures and, and events on this website, uh, cyberbricks.info. And this is the team. Uh, I think I'm particularly proud of this because it's the only is not only the only research project dedicated to BRICS, to mapping uh, BRICS digital policies in the world, it's also the only one that does it with people from the BRICS. So we have a very good uh, project with 65% uh, of the project members that are female, so it's also quite a relevant uh, gender balance dimension. It's a very heterogeneous uh, community, so although we are housed in a law school, not everyone is a lawyer. We have also economists, data scientists, sociologists, etc. Uh, the three main pillars of the project are first, analyzing the existing policies, second, identifying good practices, and ideally propose effective solutions so that this grouping could foster uh, joint understanding of shared challenges. Some of the research products we elaborate look like this. This is a mapping of all data protection frameworks in the BRICS. Uh, we develop this kind of tools. We also develop, of course, classic uh, research outputs like this uh, book where we have mapped the uh, cybersecurity regulations of the BRICS countries. Uh, an interesting part of this book, uh, in the introduction of the book and also in other papers, we stress that actually if we are, when you start analyzing digital policies in the BRICS, you, am, un you end up understanding that it's a very telling uh, example of enhanced cooperation. So Professor uh, Wolfgang was mentioning that the IGF is a result of the WISIS, and another result of WISIS was the creation of this process of enhanced cooperation that unfortunately has never been, ever, has never been put into uh, practice by the UN uh, for lack of consensus on, on what it is, but the BRICS offer a very good example of how this could look in practice. Uh, the fact that they have since 2014, for instance, created a working group on the security of ICTs to share best practices and information on how they approach the security, cyber security. Uh, they even uh, define joint commitments, for instance, to advocate for uh, global norms on cyber security and data protection. Uh, there are other initiatives. These have an explicit commitment from the declaration of the uh, ICT ministers, where they explicitly commit to cooperate, to enhance cooperation in digital governance. Uh, then there are uh, concrete initiatives like the uh, the BRICS framework on uh, consumer protection in, co in e-commerce, the BRICS initiative on enhancing cooperation in the supply chain. So there are m very good elements uh, that we can uh, assess as successful enhanced cooperation in the grouping. Uh, there is also a, an interesting article we published last year that will also be the introduction of our upcoming book on data architectures in the BRICS where uh, we uh, explicitly map w the, the frameworks, the BRICS framework of data governance, and to what extent they are already quite compatible, actually. And so what, what we demonstrate is that there are already very, it, there is already a shared principle base of data protection principles in all the frameworks, very similar sets of rights and obligations, and also that each of the BRICS has created its own system to uh, define to what extent data can be exported or transferred. They all want to transfer data, but they want to do it securely and to uh, retain some sort of digital sovereignty on them. And that is also another work stream that for on which we have an upcoming book on digital sovereignty in the BRICS that demonstrates there are a lot of different nuances, nuances of this concept and uh, very uh, different from what we could have in the Western countries usually in, in terms of thinking. Uh, to conclude, this is a preview of what will be the next phase of the project that will be dedicated to mapping uh, AI supply chain and interoperability frameworks in the BRICS. Uh, this actually was published in the uh, one a very good uh, book that was really uh, prepared by the uh, Chinese Academy of, so of Cyberspace uh, Studies and launched uh, this year, well, published first last year and launched this year. I actually, my colleagues told me that I've just received the hard copies in my office in uh, Rio this morning. Uh, and uh, to the, the last, the, the final thought that I want to share that uh, I think, I believe that if we want to work together for a community with shared future in cyberspace, the first step is to understand which kind of regulatory frameworks, approaches, 
governance mechanism we already have, and so our small contribution to this effort is precisely to start to map and understand how these enhanced cooperation processes already work and to what extent they could be replicated and even scaled. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Bailey, for the relevant story of CyberBricks. Now, let's welcome Ms. Dai Li Na, Deputy Director of the Journalism Institute of Shanghai Academy of Social Science. Please. Uh, good afternoon, distinguished guests. It's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to do, give a short speech in this panel. Since yesterday, there has been a lot of discussion about artificial intelligence. Today, I would like to see a little more about international cooperation on AI governance. In recent years, uh, both nation states, non-nation st uh, state actors and international organizations have all paid great attention to the issue of AI governance and have competed to take action. A unified system of governance rules and a global level governance mechanism have yet to be found. It is important to be aware of two concerning trends in international AR governance. One is that there is a growing trend of fragmentation in the development of AI governance rules. The competition among big countries have led to a further deficit in national mutual trust. And the ideas of uh, uh, unilateralism, statism, and the protectionism have led a profound impact on the formulation of AI rules. The other one is that the digital governance divide is widening. There are a lot of uh, lots of uh, developing countries being notably absent and voiceless in AI governance. At the same time, some developing countries are coalescing to shape the development ecosystem of AI and exercising dominance in rule setting. Uh, based on the above, there are two critical paths to an effective breakthrough in the current international process of AI governance. Firstly, we should especially promote the establishment of a specialized agency for the governance of AI and the framework of United States. Last but not least, since AI uh, uh, poses different threats to countries with different levels of technology, it is important to strengthen dialogue and cooperation among all countries. We would better to advocate for human-centered and AI-for-good approach and ensure the safety, reliability, controllability of AI so that we can empower uh, the global sustainable development and enhancing the well-being of all humankind. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Dai. Thank you very much for your kind of contribution. Due to the time limitation, we have to conclude this forum but we hope to have more in-depth exchanges and discussions also in the future. You are welcome to share your views and stories with us when convenient. Once again, we thank all guests and friends for your wisdom and efforts to contribute to this open forum. We also would like to thank the Secretary of IGF for providing us with an important dialogue platform. The open forum is concluded here. Thank you.